strengthened with might by his spirit in your inner man that Jesus Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge so that you might be filled with the fullness of God. Now, unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we may ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Father, we thank you today. We praise you for your goodness and your mercy as we enter into this season of gift giving, which we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, and just as they did when he was born, the wise men brought gifts to worship him and to honor him. We too, Lord, not only plan on gifting others this season, but Lord, we those of us that know you, the redeemed of the Lord, we thank you for the unspeakable gift, the love gift that you've given us in Christ Jesus. So Father, we thank you today. We praise you as we enter into this season that you would manifest in us the prayer of Paul for the church, that our eyes would be enlightened, that we, being rooted and grounded in love, might know the height, depth, breadth, and the width of the love of Christ and pass it all knowledge that we might be filled with the fullness with the satisfaction with everything you desire us to have with God. Father we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 The rest of the Lord. You know as we celebrate the holiday we celebrate uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas in a matter of about a month's time uh, uh, I truly believe we have to, especially the people of faith, comprehend the true spirit and substance of the holiday. Uh, turn to Colossians 2.16. Here's preached on this on Wednesday night, but here's Paul talking about uh, one of the significance of Christ. Because there's so many significance of Jesus for your life. Or, for example, the Bible says, in, in him we move and breathe and have our being. In other words, one of the significance is you're really not going anywhere. If you're not in Christ, I don't care if you get a new car. It's a whole lot of people. Money ain't going nowhere. Some of them hanging in a closet right now with a noose around their necks. You ain't going nowhere. And God has ordained it that way. In Him we move and breathe and have our being. You know, it, it, and all these other things we try to gravitate to and think is going to elevate us or motivate us or push us to the next level. It's not our day to do that. Amen. Hallelujah. It's like trying to get to New York in a big wheel. It's not our day to do that. The big wheel's for your kids to drive around in the driveway. Not to get to New York. And I'm not saying the other things are not a part of life. Of course they are. But they're not the thing that God has ordained. So Colossians 2.16 says this, and since we're talking about the holidays, it says, let, let no man judge you in a meat or in drink. You know, we eat and drink. Y'all eat and drink for Thanksgiving? Come on, church folk. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't be good. All I have is water and soda. Okay. That's all right. Amen. So y'all had more than water and soda. So you know, I was drinking Hennessy and vodka and wine and drinking all that. But the boss said, don't let nobody judge you in that. Or in drink or in respect of a holiday. A lot of Christians don't believe you should celebrate Christmas. Listen to what it says. Or in the new moon or in the Sabbath days. Keep going. Which are a shadow of things to come. So in other words, Thanksgiving and Christmas are only shadows. They're shadows. Thanksgiving, for example, when you get to heaven, all people are going to be doing is thanking God. Hallelujah. Read Revelation. All, all the hopes of heaven is just going to be praying hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Ain't going to be no sickness. It's going to be a nonstop party when you get to heaven. And then the birth of Christ, the, I'm going to talk about this. One of the bases of the birth of Christ and everything Christ did is love. So what Christmas really is a shadow of is God's love towards you. How many of you would take your little bad child? Your kids is hella bad. And you wouldn't offer them up. 
He took his son who was perfect and he loved you so much, he offered up that baby. He was born to die for the sins of the world. So it's an expression of love. So Christmas is a shadow or a type of God's love. But listen, if you want to get to the substance, say that with me, if you want to get to the substance, the real thing, where is it at? The body is what? Of Christ. So that's what Jesus represents. The authentic, authenticity of God. Religion doesn't do it. I grew up in the church. I'm a fifth generation pastor, son. The, 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 the Pentecostals don't do it. The Baptists don't do it. You can get caught up in all that denominationalism and form all you want. If you don't receive Jesus, there's not going to be any real substance. That's why a lot of church folks live defeated lives. That's why a lot of church folks ain't got no power. They don't have no joy. They don't have no love. They couldn't, can't save nobody, can't help nobody, can't make a difference to nobody. Because in order for that to happen, you have to have substance. That's why a lot of Christians quit. Because they didn't have no substance. It wasn't no substance there. It was just a bunch of outward stuff. That's why a lot of Christians don't support things of God. Like migrants being locked up on the border. Because you're just into religion. You're not into substance. If you had substance, you would say, hey, I don't agree with that. Show me in the Bible. Show me. Show me what Jesus said. But if you ain't got no substance, you'll represent a man where you represent Jesus. You'll represent, you'll be all up in my face. Amen. Pastor, you so great. You so great. Till I say something you don't want to hear. And then because you ain't got no substance, you'll be, I'm leaving. Somebody say amen. Don't look at me like I ain't preaching. Amen. I, I'm telling the truth up in here today. It's a lot of fake folk in the world. Today. Ain't got nothing on the inside. Look good. A lot of men, muscles look good. Teeth straight. Got a great smile, but won't even stay with their wives. Won't even take care of their kids. They ain't got no substance. Amen. You better marry Urkel. Find you an Urkel. Marry him. At least you know he's going to be there when you have that third child. Amen. A lot of these, lot of these women. Amen. You look good. That way you look good. My eyelashes. I saw some eyelashes the other day. They they, 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 they fake, but you know, they, they crisscross. Oh, look at them eyelashes. Ain't about nothing. Ain't about nothing. Give me a nappy head woman, amen. Give me an old nappy head woman. Hallelujah. They know how to act right. Come on, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I don't mind you getting your head right. Just learn how to act right. Amen. Go ahead and get your hair done. Amen. That's all right. I ain't mad at you. But don't be walking up in here with an attitude. Walking up here stanky and acting nasty and ugly. Come on, work with a brother. Amen? Praise God. So, you know, we have to understand substance. The substance is in Christ. What is the substance of Christ? His birth, his life, it was all about love. The substance of Jesus' life was love. The Bible says this, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. So that's what Jesus' life was about. And turn to Acts 10, 38. Acts 10, 38. Look what, look what the Apostle Paul said about Jesus' life. His life was, his birth was about love. His life was about love. Acts 10, 38. Thank you. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And that's what Jesus is about today. Some of us in here right now, you are oppressed of the devil. You have oppression in your life, depression in your life. You got low self-esteem, amen. You needy, you're hungry, and ain't nobody going to satisfy you but Jesus. Ain't no man going to satisfy that, quench, quench that thirst, amen. Ain't nobody going to put that fire out but Jesus. Glory to God. That's what Jesus' life was about. He spent his whole life going around doing good. Casting out demons, healing sick folk, feeding people, delivering people that even religious people wanted to stone, like the woman he, they claimed was caught in the very act of adultery. That's what his life was about. It was about love in Jesus' name. And then his death was about love. Romans 5, 7 says, 
that scarcely one might pre-adventure die for a good man, and one may scarcely die for a righteous man, but God commended his love towards you when you were yet a sinner. Jesus died for you. His whole, his whole, the whole stuff, substance of God is love. God, matter of fact, God is only defined as a couple things. He's defined as light, and he's defined as love. Two things. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. So it's vitally important in Jesus' name. And then he got up because he loved you. The Bible says this. He, he, he was crucified for your offenses, for your sins. Now, let me ask you this. If he died for your sins, but you still was locked up in prison for him, would him dying for your sins have done any good? No, you're still paying the penalty. But the Bible says he rose up so that you could be justified or released. So even his resurrection was because he loved you. The Bible says he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. Hallelujah. The Uzi that the devil used to put you in jail, he took the Uzi from the devil and gave it to you and said, now I have to get business. Knock him down. Kill him. Poverty, sickness, death, oppression. That's the love of God, man. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Jesus said this, how, how many of you having a son, if he was hungry and he asked for bread, you'd give him a rock? How many, if your son was hungry and he asked for fish, you'd give him a snake? Hallelujah. God knows how to bless you. He, in, the, in the base of his blood, listen, if I'm in a warfare, hallelujah, I don't need no ham sandwich. I need a cannon, a bazooka, or something I can nuke the devil with, Amen. Hallelujah. So God know how to bless you. He know how to bring you out. In Jesus' name. And it's all rooted in the love of God in Jesus. So as his representatives on earth, the Bible says we're his ambassadors, we're his light. Light depicts truth and love. We're his salt. We, hallelujah, can't lose our savor. And you know what our savor? Jesus said if the salt has lost the savor, it's not good for anything. And you know what the savor is? of a believer is your love. If you've lost your love, God can't use you. You're not good for that. If you don't let this world beat you up so bad that you can't love nobody, if you claim that you're a, a Christian and you're a racist, if you claim that you're a believer and you're a backbiter and a gossiper and a strife causer and a division cause, God can't use you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. But listen, this world gets hard. Sometimes, listen, I want to cuss, fuss, slap folks. Sometimes I want to do even more than that. But the Bible says it's the love of God that keeps me back. I don't know how many people I done told that did something to me that I had really, in the legal sense, every right to hurt them. And my comment to them is, you better thank God for Jesus. You bet you need to get saved right now. God, if it wasn't for Jesus. Oh, y'all don't hear me up here. Hallelujah. I lay out thank AK man now. You should see AK without Jesus. You would be poor, I thank God for AK in Jesus' name. Oh, please. Hallelujah. You know, that's, a, that's how Paul was. Paul started preaching, people were scared. Paul, he's a mess. Ain't no way he preaching. No. Not until he met Jesus. And he came into the knowledge of the love of God. So if you are a believer, it is imperative that you know the love of God. So that by knowing the love of God, you have a desire to love him back. You cannot really know the love of God and not want to love God back. If you really know it, if you don't want to love God right now, it's because you really don't know the love of God. Because the love of God, like Paul said in Ephesians, he says, I pray that your eyes would be enlightened. I pray that you would know the height, depth, and the breadth of the width. That you, one translation said that you would comprehend it. So the love of Jesus and God has to be revealed. It has to be comprehended before you're even going to start getting to serve and love God the way you should. Then 
then the love of God is going to make you love yourself more. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Even when other people don't find any worth in you, it is the love of God that causes you to see worth in yourself. Yes. Hallelujah. If you don't know the love of God, you're going to be looking to find wor uh, your worth in a man or a job or some money. Hallelujah. Or something outward. And it's never going to work. Hallelujah. But if you if you know the love of God, people can talk about you, they can leave you, they can whatever they can do whatever they want. But you are not going to be moved from knowing that you are loved by God, you are special to God. God loves you with an unchanging love. And see, that stuff brings all kinds of other graces into your life, like healing. You know, you you have a far more greater chance to be healed from something if you know God loves you. Amen. Hallelujah. Then, because his love enables us to love ourselves, it helps us to know how to love others. Yes. And that's what the church is called to. You're called to three things. You're called to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and yourself. You're called to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And the reason the church is not really operating in 2020 as it should, it isn't because we don't have knowledge. We have more knowledge today than we ever had. It isn't because we don't have money. We have money. It isn't because we don't have resources. We have resources. But the one thing that has happened, the love of God has waxed cold. So, some people in church, y'all go to church with people, y'all whole like people that bless you, people that help helped you, encourage you in hard times. And times something happened you don't like, you talk about them. You want to kick them to the curb. You want to, you know, sow discord on them. And you want to get in a conversation. Oh, I'm not going to gossip, but we just talk about all your gossiping. That's what you're doing. And you're gossiping about someone that God has commanded you to love. And he says this. This is really how you know that you have passed from death unto life. What is passing unto death and life? Passing death unto life is saying, this is how you really know you're really saved. You know how? If you love the brethren. If you don't love the brethren, you're not saved. You're not saved. You can get saved. But if you don't love the people that God has put in your life, Cause I, you know, I got other partners. I, you know, brother, I got one friend I grew up with. He blessed me. I, I told him when my my patio or my deck was falling apart because the dude could build it, build it cheap. And I said, man, what you gonna charge me for this? Said, man, if you help me, I do it for free. So we we done built the deck. We just got the railings left, and it's two feet bigger. It's it, the, the material is better. Amen. In Jesus' name, Hallelujah. It's a nice deck. And I, you know, he's cool. He's been there before, White Mike, with the, uh, uh, Ishmael, uh, Yeshua calls him Uncle Papa, because I guess he think he looked like me. He got a gray beard just like me, but he's a white boy. He's bald here. He's like me. He grew up with brothers, though. He, you, I told him, you got black in you. You need to get your DNA to him. Even his beard is nappy. His beard down there nappy is mine. I said, I know you got black in you. He's a good brother. But I don't love him like I love people that I'm connected to in life. Because I'm not connected to him in life. We'll golf together. He's cool. So the Bible says, this is how you know. This is what the word says. This is how men shall know that you are my followers. Not if you beat them over the head with the word of God. Not if you can quote scriptures. Not if you can appear to be deep. And spiritual, and you've entered into the esoteric realm of spirituality. That's not how. The Bible says men will know you're my followers if you love. It's the only way that people are going to know who we are, what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. It's the only way that your faith is going to work effectively. So when we get a revelation of love, turn to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. We got to get a revelation of God's love. God's love ain't like man's love. It's not like man's love. 1 John, I'm sorry. 1 John chapter 3. 
Look what it says here. First John chapter 2. Behold, what manner of love is this? That the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not because it knew him not. So that statement, behold, what manner of love is this? Is that a statement that I already know what it is or I need to find out what it is? I need to find out what the love of God is. This is the basis of your faith. If you do not get a growing revelation. Now, let me give you a disclaimer here. God is love. So if you cannot figure out God, guess what? You really can't figure out love. You have to grow in love. You'll never be able to exhaust all of the intricacies of God's love. But you have to commit yourself to saying, I want to grow and learn more about how to love like God. How to accept his love in my life and in other people's life. Because if I don't, I'm not going to be able to be used effectively by God. Now. This is the thing I want you to understand about the first thing about the revelation of God's love. It is a gift. You cannot earn it. You can't be good enough for it. it it's, it's, it's like you got $200 and somebody going to give you a $20,000 car. You ain't got enough. They just giving it to you. It's a gift. Grace is unmerited favor, but it is a, but it is rooted in unconditional love. And that's the kind of love God has. So when it says, behold, what matter of love? It's an unconditional love. There are no conditions to God's love for you. Now, there are consequences in God's love for you. In other words, God ain't going to let you just do anything, and he's not going to do nothing to stop you because he loves you. Amen. He cares about you. He's not going to let you just go off into left field and not him not send somebody or send the spirit or send the anointing to quicken your spirit to let you know, well, well you know, I'm in a bad place. That was the, the preeminent question God asked man after he fell in sin. He didn't ask him why he did it. He said, where are you? God wants you to know where you are because he loves you. You could be headed for destruction in that relationship. God wants you to know, don't you see that you, you ain't got no merit? Come on, let's, let's just retract his history. He has six kids by five women. Okay, I love you. I, I'm just trying to help you. Don't think you're going to get in the stop. Because you're not. See? So it's unconditional love. God loves us unconditional. It's an unconditional love. Hallelujah. So that means there's nothing you can do to earn it, which means it's a gift. If I give you a gift and say, hey, uh, uh, let me get $40 for this. It's not a gift. It's got to be free if it's a gift. If it's not free, you know how you try to sell yourself online, oh, get your free uh uh, 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 then they ask you to pay for shipping. <laughs> it ain't free then. They're <laughs> paying for shipping. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll order some golf balls. They still ain't selling. $14.99. 24 balls. I started thinking about that. I'm like, now I can go to Walmart and get 24 balls for like, yeah, the same. What would I buy the balls for? I called them to the council. They sent me my $14 back. <laughs> Yeah. So it's free. So what happens with any gift, if I give you a gift, hallelujah, at Christmas time, in order for you to know the gift, it has to be what? Unwrapped. Because just like your Christmas gifts are wrapped, God's love and the gift of his love is also has to be uncovered. It has to be revealed. If it isn't revealed, you will never know it. Amen. The problem is, a lot of times, we fall more in love with the wrapping of God's love than we actually do with what's inside the gift. In other words, we'll fall in love with religion and tradition and ceremonies and rituals 
and routines and just gathering together with people like in a social setting, but that's just the wrapping. That, that isn't the gift. And I don't know now one of y'all who still got unwrapped gifts from last year. Some of y'all might, you might, you know, figure who it came from wasn't good and you're going to give it to somebody else. But most of y'all have unwrapped your gift. But a lot of times what we do, we settle for the wrapping in church. The ceremony, the ritual, the tradition. Oh, I like that denomination. I like the way they praise. That don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. Some of them folks hopping and jumping and screaming and shaking and falling out, they love nobody. They can't love nobody. They full of mess. They ain't got the love of God in them. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah, we have to uh, 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 get to a point, glory to God, amen, where we learn that there is a difference between the trappings of religion and what Jesus is really about. As I said, I grew up in the church. I don't have nothing against tradition, but it has its place. Amen. I'm not going to put tradition over the love of God. If someone walks in here in flip flops and a short now, in shorts right now, I'm not going to say, oh, so I'm at the door, don't let them in the sanctuary because they ain't dressed, they ain't dressed appropriately to come up in here with them shorts. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm not going to do that. Because if we were a church where we needed to dress in a certain way to come to church, Amen. That's just a tradition. It shouldn't supersede the fact that this is someone made in God's image that needs to be healed or saved or delivered or blessed. It don't matter what they've been through. It don't matter how they're coming. Amen. We say, I'll die. I came to Jesus as I was. Amen. Hallelujah. And we have to have the same mindset to the unsaved world. Listen, you guys. The world has no other options other than us. God ordained it that way. You're not going to find it in the mechanisms in the world, in the systems of the world, in the things that the world offers. You can chase money. You can chase dreams. You can chase career. You can chase celebrity. You can chase whatever you want to chase. But the substance of our life is only going to be found in the message of God's love that he has given to us. Think about it. How many people do you really share the love of God with? Really? That's what we're called to do. We're called to share God's love. Hallelujah. That's what our testimonies are about. That's what our lives are are symbols of that God took something broken, messed up, and look what he's done with it. That's why I share all the time about my when I was a crack addict. Just so that they can know God's love is bigger than crack cocaine addiction. I ain't gonna crack yet. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. See? But it's our mandate. If the world is going to be saved, if it's going to be delivered, if they're going to know, it's going to be through our love. How, 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 how many of you have gone out of your way for someone else? See, a lot of us, we won't do that. There, there is no reason. Uh, no, it's our first sermon. We got another one after. There ain't no reason we should have two pet services. No reason at all. There's no reason. Plain and simple. If people operated in the kind of love that God has ordained them to operate in, people would come to church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I saw a brother post the other day. Uh, I posted this picture on Facebook about this man on fire in church. He was burning up in church and running down the aisles. And he says, this is how some people feel when they come to church. And I posted, I said, I wish people would really gravitate more to the love of God than the fear of God. But if it takes fear to get them here, then it's some, you know, that's, that's what you got to do. You know, some of y'all going to hell if you don't. <laughs> you don't receive the love of God, the free gift of God, you're going to hell. I hate to say it. Well, Pastor, isn't that a little harsh? Take it up with Jesus. I didn't say it. He's <laughs> telling you what he said. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. If you got a problem with it, 
Right? Hey, don't he say that? There are many ways to God. Not according to Jesus. I ain't never seen in the Bible where it said you go out to the wilderness and commune with the redwoods and look at the flowing waterfalls and you can commune and get in touch with God. Yes, you can see God's handiwork, but the only purpose of that is so that you will submit yourself and humble yourself and start seeking God. That's the only reason for that. It's not for you to start worshiping the waterfall. Or communing with the waterfall. God is saying, why don't you commune with the one who made the waterfall? Right. That's the purpose of that. In Jesus' name. So it's vitally important as believers to know the love of God. Receive it in your life. Walk in it. It's vitally important to learn how to unwrap all the other stuff in our lives that get us all bogged down. In Jesus' name. So Ephesians 3 says this. Turn back to Ephesians 3, verse 17. Look at verse 17. Let's go through this real quick. Ephesians 3, verse 17 says this. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith that you being rooted and grounded. What are you rooted and grounded in? Tell somebody, say, you'll never be stable. Say, you'll never be unmovable. Say this. You'll always get tossed by something. A test, a trial, a person, if you don't know the love of God. Because what roots me, the reason I've been pastoring for 25 years, through mistakes, through trials, through offenses, through people attacking me, through being married, through trying to raise kids, through falling short. But what has caused me to be able to stand and be rooted is the love of God. It is the love of God that when the storm comes, I'm still not moved. It is the love of God that when the enemy attacks me, hallelujah, I know I got the victory anyway. It is the love of God that when I fall seven times, I can get up again and brush myself off. Hallelujah. It is the love of God when people talk about me and I can tell them in Jesus' name, no one can lay anything to the charge of God's elect. Hallelujah. Nothing can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Go to the next verse. That you may be able to count for him with all the saints. What is the breath, length, depth, and height? Do, do this with me. The breath. The width, the, width, the, width, the depth, depth, and the heights. Tell somebody say, it ain't nowhere you can go that the love of God ain't there. Tell somebody and say, I don't care if you're in the jailhouse. He's going to be there. Tell somebody and say, I don't care if you're in the hospital. Say, he's going to be there. Let somebody say, I don't care if you're at the courthouse or the divorce court. I don't care where you're at. I don't care if you're stranded in the hood. Amen. Hallelujah. The love of God is going to be there with you. Because he said, you need to know the height of it. That covers everything. The depth of it. The breadth and the width. It don't matter if I go to the east, he's going to be in the east. If I go to the west, he's going to be in the west. His love is an all-consuming love. In Jesus' name. It touches your every part of your life. If you don't know the love of God, you are headed for the divorce court. If you don't know the love of God, you ain't going to raise your children the way you should raise them. If you don't love them, know the love of God, you're going to fall into a relationship that you don't know. But if you know the love of God, I don't care if you run into no good daddy. I don't care if you run into hot mama Susie. God's love is going to deliver you. He's going to let you know this is not for you. I got something better for you in Jesus' name. You ain't got to settle for this because the love of God is everywhere. Can I get a witness? Amen. Some of y'all that came out of stuff you don't know how you came out of. I can tell you how you came out of it. It was the love of God. Some of y'all should have been killed some of the places you've been and the things you have done. But you didn't and I'll tell you why. It was the love of God. Some of you should have lost your mind over what happened to you as a child and what you went through like Brother Daryl's testimony. But I'll tell you why God kept the Daryl. It was the love of God. Because even though your daddy may have hurt you, you had another daddy that would never hurt you. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. And he now praised you up. He helped keep you. He now delivered you. He promised your mother when your daddy wasn't there. He kept your sister, hallelujah, when she was looking for some validation in Jesus' name. And what I want to know today, will you be bold enough, hallelujah, to step out in faith and take away 
the wrapping of the love of God and take a close look at all the hell you've been through, all the trials you've been through, yet God's love was with you the whole time. Can I get a witness? You going through something right now, you don't know how you made it. So baby, I came to tell you today, it was the love of God that woke you up. And instead of you being depressed, you had joy and you didn't even know where it was coming from. You got to take your wrapping off, man. Tell so somebody say, quit being focused on the outside stuff. Uh, look at look at somebody and say, the ribbons, the wrappings, the boxes. You know, I'm the type of gift over I just tear my stuff up. Oh, wait a minute. Just think, no, nah, I don't care about that. I want to know what's inside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. See, you can't know the love of God if you all consume with what's going on on the outside. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I don't change the love of God. The love of God. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what that scripture in Romans 8 says. They not separate me from the love of God. Right. Peril, pestilence, famine, and sword, principalities, power, things visible or invisible, things in my past are able to come. He said, nothing. I'm convinced yeah. nothing shall separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a scripture in the Bible that says God's love is stronger than death. Yes. My, my, my wife's aunt, my auntie died just recently, and I talked to her son, called him on the phone. I said, how you doing, Willie? He said, I'm good. He said, thanks for calling. I said, man, I'm sorry about Aunt Margaret, man. You know, she died on Thanksgiving. I said, y'all ain't never going to be able to forget her. Amen. Her Amen. Gonna be with you always. She was like, Hallelujah. I'm, I'm dying today, so. <laughs> Y'all gonna remember me next, right. next Thanksgiving. Thank Hallelujah. Yeah. And she said, you know what he said to me? He said, I can thank God, you know, because God loved my mother so much, he wouldn't let her suffer no more. Yeah. See, we don't see it. We don't look right. at it like that. Right. If you ever seen somebody suffer, you would know that God releasing them from yeah. this ravaged yeah. body is his way of loving you. Yeah. This is way of loving. So go to the next verse real quick. Yeah. And to know the love of God, which passes knowledge, and see this is what the love of God will do. It it will fill you. Yeah. Touch him, I say, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. Yeah. So I ain't looking for love. Yeah. So I got love. Yeah. See, the woman as well was looking for love. Five, five others. Okay. And the man she was with now wouldn't even marry. But huh. then she met the love of God. The Bible says she dropped her water pot. Yeah. So I don't need this no more. See, so many people in life are not fulfilled. And then when you get things that you think are going to fulfill you, you realize, I'm still not happy. That's right. You know why? It's only the love of God that will fill you with the fullness of God. And then last verse, when we get to this part, next verse, please. Once we know the love of God, that's when God says, now I can do things in your life that are exceedingly and abundantly above. Tell somebody say, that's when the healing will come. Say, when you get a revelation of his love, tell somebody say, that's when the breakthrough is coming. Tell somebody say, when you get a revelation of his love, that's when that child is coming back. That's when that situation is being solved. Tell somebody say, when we get a revelation of the love of God, tell somebody say, that's when God is going to begin to do things in our church that are exceedingly and abundantly above. That's when we're going to see family saved. That's when we're going to see people come to Christ that can never be saved. That's when we're going to see deliverance and healings and breakthroughs. Because he says, now that you got a revelation of my love, I'm going to do things exceedingly and abundantly, and they're going to be more than you can ever ask right. or think. Tell somebody to say, God's love is unimaginable. Man, God's love towards you is so great. God wants to bless you in ways that when people see you this time next year, they'll look at you and not even know it's you. I thought that was you, but what if you just don't look? Okay. That's the love of God. See, a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all sitting there, you know, you got that little religious spirit on you, you know, because you think it's you. It ain't you. It ain't you. It's the love of God. It's the one who loves you. 
It's the one who loves you, it ain't you. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor Thor, you've been pastor 25 years, you authored some books, and your church is awesome, church is it, and it means the one who loves me. It's the one who loves me. That's who it is. And then, and then he says this, it's according to the power that works in us. Say this, if you want to live in power, you got to know the love of God. That's why I said, can't even stop me. Say, can a devil in hell stop me? Can a trial, a test, an enemy, a shortcoming, an infirmity, a weakness, a fight? Can't nothing stop me, amen, because of the love of God. It empowers my life. See, people who know how to love are empowered people. People who don't know how to love, everything in this world going to beat them up. Discourage them. Have them feeling all bad about their situation. Hallelujah. One thing you need to know about the love of God, this world you live in right here, he got something way for, better for you than this. So you might as well quit tripping off this. This, this, this. this world is not even intended to satisfy you. You're supposed to be unsatisfied. So quit looking at your husband and trying to act like he's supposed to be sad. That's not, this world ain't supposed to satisfy you. If this world satisfies you, why, why would you want to even go to heaven? <laughs> you ain't supposed to be satisfied in this life. Hallelujah. You're supposed to know that God loves me so much that even though I'm walking through the valley in the shadow of death, hallelujah, I'm still blessed. I'm still an overcomer. I'm still all that in Christ Jesus because he loves me. Amen? You receive that today? Do you receive the love of God over your life today? An unconditional love, something you can't earn, something so miraculous, something so awesome, you can't describe it. You have to seek Him to get a comprehension and a glimpse of His love. That's my prayer for you. Get a glimpse of the love of God, what it really is, and how great it really is. And it will transform your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Father, we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name for the love of God. For the love gift that you've given us in Christ. Lord, reveal it to us. Let us comprehend it in a greater way. Let it not only motivate us in our relationship with you, but also in how we see ourselves and how we see our brothers and our sisters in Christ. Lord, let us reject every spirit that's contrary to your love. Fear, unbelief, shame, guilt, strife, debate. I curse it right now over our church, over our members, over our families, over our relationships. And I speak forth the only thing that authenticates us as the church, which is your love. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name we pray. Before you leave, grab somebody's left hand, let them know you love them. Ask them, is there anything you need from them? Prayer, is there anything they're going through? Amen. And love on somebody before you leave. In Jesus' name.